When I was in first grade, I got to partake in the best vacation Bible school program ever. My church back in Shanhassen, Minnesota, had put on a full recreation of the town of Galilee, or at least as far as my very naive six-year-old brain could know, to simulate Jesus' experience of growing up in a way that probably was not at all accurate. It was filled with games and activities and food, but best of all, there was a stand with an entire tub filled with dirt and worms. Now, I'm looking around here because some of you know what that means. It's not actual dirt and worms. No, no, no. Dirt and worms is the delicacy, the uh, sublime combination of pudding, Oreo crumbs, and gummy worms. And this dirt and worms tub was entirely free. Just like grace! So I dug into that dessert tub, eating roughly half of the prepared provision, until an adult finally noticed me devouring the dirt and worms all by myself. And stopped me, fully in character, kudos to this, you know, adult volunteer, demanding to know whether I had the money to pay for what I ate. Because it turned out that this dirt and worms tub was not as free as I thought. You were supposed to get some money from the other activities that you were playing and then use that money to pay for the dirt and worms, but I didn't know that. I was six years old. I'm not an economics major. So this adult leader chastised me for being so selfish and eating the dessert that was intended to feed at least 30 other kids, and when I revealed that I did not have any of the fictional money you were supposed to win from those games around the church, the adult det- attendant declared that I must go to the pretend prison for a timeout. While adult Bergen can realize that this was all a game, young Bergen had no idea that this was acted out anger, and so instead, I ran away in terror. Finding a spot underneath a church pew where I hid for hours, even as people called out for me by name. I don't share this story to call out this church or that adult attendant. They were doing their best to create a fun experience. But I want to share with you the moment when I first noticed that I was afraid of the church. This fear would unfortunately grow with time as I came to realize that in spite of a love for the church, for the community, the commitment to service, passion for God and faith, there were also a lot of people in the church who didn't think that people like me deserved to be a part of the church or at least not welcomed as equals. And when I say people like me, I'm talking about queer people, LGBTQI plus people. I'm talking about neurodivergent people, especially kids who experience the world differently and have trouble communicating when things make them uncomfortable or unwelcome. I'm talking about people with doubts, people who do not always agree with the standard doctrine or practice who are filled with questions. To be clear, it was not the entire church that made me unwelcome. Most of it did, but the fact that certain people could declare their disapproval openly for people like me, for people that I loved, made me afraid, and so I did what I did back at that first vacation Bible school experience. I hid in fear, resisting God's call to come out of fear until I could no longer, and the church has come a long way since I was growing up. And good shepherd, let me just lift up here. You are a wonderful church with an expansive and create, or courageous welcome for people of all genders, sexualities, abilities, disabilities, races, classes, and questions. You let me teach a class on queer theology, for goodness sakes. And yet, my fear of the church runs deep. So I'd like to ask us all gathered today, what are you afraid of? And what do you fear? Because in just over a month, the ELCA Youth Gathering will host 20,000 Lutheran youth from across the country and beyond in the city of New Orleans to worship, to serve, and to learn together. Three youth from Good Shepherd will be going to this incredible gathering where these young and emerging adults will have their faith expanded, challenged, and called by bold new perspectives, passionate speakers, thinkers, and leaders, and the emergent theologies from the Lutheran Church. And uniting the experiences at this gathering is a theme taken from Psalm 139, our psalm from today, specifically in verse 14, that says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
which the gathering summarizes and the proclamation that we are created to be. Full stop. Not that we are created to prove our worth, to achieve our purpose, to find success. We are created simply to be. And each of the five days of the gathering emphasizes a way in which we are created to be by declaring that we are created to be brave, created to be authentic, created to be free, created to be disruptive, and created to be disciples. And I love how those themes work together to form a coherent sentence by saying that we are created to be brave, authentic, free, disruptive disciples. And as youth from this community prepare to go to this gathering to learn and discover and grow and serve, I believe it is our responsibility to prepare alongside of them. By examining these themes, and on this Sunday, I would like us to explore the themes of how we are created to be brave and created to be disruptive. Because our texts ask us today, what are we afraid of and what do we fear? In Psalm 139, the author lays out a clear case for why we should not be afraid because God has created every part of us. God has lovingly formed us from the blood and bone and muscle and skin that makes us up, from the thoughts and feelings that fill our body and brain, to the words that come from our lips and the actions that emanate from us. God has not left the creation of us to be an accident. We have been made specifically by God to be exactly who we are for such a time as this. So why should we be afraid? Well, Jesus' life shows us why. For Jesus does something as simple as eat grain on the Sabbath. Actually, it's just Jesus' companions that eat grain on the Sabbath. And the religious leaders that he trusts cut him down with their words. As we talked about during the children's time, the judgments, the words of others can be the most painful things to receive. These religious leaders criticize him for doing what is not lawful. And when Jesus asks them whether he is permitted to do good on the Sabbath and help a man with a withered hand, he is met with the silence of apathy and judgments waiting for him to do something that they can use as the excuse to exclude him. For while we can believe that God has created us to be exactly who we are, all it takes is a single act of judgment, disapproval, policing, rejection from the people we trust to govern the systems that we trust to keep us safe, to make us feel alone, isolated, worthless, afraid. And Jesus has every right to be afraid, for his act of disruption leads the authorities in his life to begin plotting to destroy him. But Jesus also gives us the message of bravery through fear, by declaring that the humanity, sorry, by declaring that humanity was not made for the Sabbath, but that the Sabbath was made for humanity. Or in other words, humanity was not created to live in fear and obedience, but humanity was created to be brave in response to fear. God created you to respond with bravery to that which you fear. Which is why I ask again, what do you fear? Because bravery, real bravery, begins by naming our fears. Because to name our fears is to name why God has created us to be brave. And what God has created us to disrupt. So I would like you to find a partner or a group of people, preferably beyond those of your immediate circle, but as always, make sure you stay safe. And make sure that everyone in The community here is included. I'd like you to share what you fear. And after sharing this, I will give you a cue to switch. I will ask you to share what you believe God has created you to disrupt. Please keep yourself safe, but also I encourage you to be as vulnerable as you can feel today. Because the more honest we can be about what we fear, the more we can unleash our truth of how God has created us to be brave and disruptive. So, now, go ahead, 
Find someone near you or far away if you want to walk and share, what do you fear? Thank you. Thank you. Let me affirm that you are holy in your fears, that God is with you in those fears. Let me also affirm that you are absolutely called to disrupt what you have named and to disrupt what you have left unnamed. But that is why you are here. That is why you are created. For what is a church if not a place to support one another in the ways that we have been created by God, saved by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and filled with the Holy Spirit to be brave and disruptive, not to discipline and police people, but to promote or to promote a culture of fear, but to liberate one another, to bring their unique witness to the love of God into this world as the necessary healing response to the proliferation of fear. I shared at the beginning of this message that I am afraid of the church or have been afraid of the church because I was shown that the church exists to reform people and not people to reform the church. And still to this day, I hear churches of all kinds, beliefs, and practices talk about people outside the church as if they need to be reformed and changed and shaped, disciplined, and ruled by the church, rather than the church needing to be changed by the people who know that God exists both inside and outside of the church, who know that God's love and mercy and forgiveness stretch far beyond a single space on a Sunday morning. My fear is that the church will continue to make people afraid rather than to learn to embrace the beautiful multiplicity, delightful diversity of God's creation and be changed in the way that Jesus called upon all religious structures to change, to accommodate humanity's need to be supported in believing that we have been created to be brave and disruptive. For God has not created the church to reform people. God has called people and created people to reform the church and to reform the world. God created God's self in Jesus to reform the world with a love that was so great as to lay down their life for their friends and to raise again into life that is new forever. And God created God's self and the Holy Spirit to awaken every human heart to know that God has created them to respond to fear with bravery, to respond to oppression with disruption, to respond to hate in any form with the love that lives forever. We, my dear church, are God's response to a world of fear and oppression. We are what restores a withered world into a world of abundance where new life rises for all people and where all means all. But this requires us to examine the systems that make up the church, to confront the fears that motivate the church and respond with the bravery to call them out and call them into change, to confront the operations of oppression that determine who the church exists primarily to serve and whose privilege the church prioritizes, and respond with disruption that leads to the conflict that is necessary for all people to experience full safety, honor, and belonging. Because if my fear is of the church, then I confess that God has created me to be brave by disrupting the forces that once made me feel unwelcome and by disrupting the systems that made me feel like God's love was not for me. Because God's love is for me and God's love is for you. Because God has created us all to be brave, authentic, free, disruptive, disciples. And we hear Jesus proclaim boldly that the church does not exist to reform people, but people exist to reform the church and form the church. And we see in Jesus' refusal to obey authority of oppression in his bravery in response to fear and his determined disruption by healing the man with a withered hand that hope can resurrect this world of fear and oppression when we have a church and a faith that invites itself to be radically reformed by all of the people that God has created to be brave and disruptive. So what are you afraid of? What do you fear? And how has God fearfully and wonderfully created you to be brave and disruptive? in such a time as this. Because the church needs you. The world 
needs you, and God needs you to make the brave and disruptive act and trust of faith of being who God created you to be.